So this tutorial will show you how to create a simple little predator prey game in Scratch. So the idea is that this space ghost chases around the other characters. It fall the space ghost follows uh, the motion of my cursor, and every time it catches or touches one of these other characters, the eaten score up in the left corner goes up. When the time runs out from 20 seconds, we get this game over message. Okay, so to begin, you will want to go to scratch.mit.edu, and once you're there, you will see a uh, up at the top a button to create, and when you click create, it will take you here to the uh, Scratch creator. Um, so the first thing we want to do is add a backdrop. So we go down here to this little backdrop symbol and choose a backdrop. And I'm going to pick a space backdrop. I'm going to use this nebula. So we click that. And I just want you to notice once the backdrop is selected, so we select the backdrop, we go up here to the backdrop tab next to code. There's um, a blank option and then there's this option. So right now we can get rid of this blank option. We want to only keep the nebula. We can also, or then, well after that we need to go to the sprite and I'm going to get rid of the cat sprite. So I'm going to click this X. Instead I'm going to add a sprite by going here to choose a sprite and I'm going to use the fantasy characters for this particular game. So I have my space ghost here, and I'm also, so that's going to be the predator. The space ghost is the predator. And then I also need to add one more sprite that's going to be the prey. So I'm going to choose Gobo, this little guy, as my first prey. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the predator, the ghost, right here. And up here next to code, I have the costumes tab. So I have actually four different choices I can use for the ghost. Now there is a way to make it cycle through these different options. So while the ghost is moving around, it'll be changing between these options. But for now, I'm just gonna select this one. Um, it's kind of the scariest one and his mouth is open so it looks like he's ready to eat something. Okay, then I'm gonna go to Gobo over here and same thing, um, under the costumes tab, I want to find one where he looks kind of scared. So I think there he looks a little frightened. So I'm going to make sure that I have that third one selected for Gobo. And also, I want Gobo to be smaller than the Space Ghost. So I'm going to change Gobo's size to, um, let's see, let's try making him 60. So I'm erasing 100 over here and typing in 60 and then hitting enter on the keyboard. There we go. Okay, so before we go any further, um, if you have logged in, like if you've created a Scratch account and you've logged into your account um, and you want to save your project, then go ahead and do so now. So you would click right here um, create a name for your project, so I'm going to call this Space Ghost Tutorial. And then I'm um, going to go to File and Save Now. Okay, and you might want to do that periodically just to make sure that all of your work is saved. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and create the basic code for our predator, or the ghost in my case. So this means um, we're just going to be doing the basic movements. We'll add in some extras, do some troubleshooting, and but I mean, what I mean by extras is like the score uh, and the timer. We'll add that in after. So just doing motion now. So make sure you have the ghost selected or the, whatever predator you're using. And then you want to make sure you're in the coding tab right here. Okay. So we're going to start off with... Um, the events code blocks and we want to use this one right here when green flag clicked meaning that everything that's going to happen next will only happen after you've clicked the green flag so when the green flag is clicked we're going to want the predator or the ghost in this case to follow the cursor around the screen so in order to do that first we need to 
to take one of these control blocks and we need to drag this forever block right here. And the reason is we want the uh, space ghost or the predator to keep following us the entire time, keep following the cursor. We don't want it to just do it once and then stop. So whenever we want some um, a sprite or one of the characters to do something over and over, uh, we need the forever block. Okay. And what do we want it to do over and over forever? Well, go to motion block up here, and we want it to point towards the mouse pointer. So it's going to point towards wherever we have our pointer, and then after that we want it to move a certain amount of steps. Now, I want it to move pretty slowly. And the reason is, well, you'll see in a moment, but actually the slower it moves, kind of can make it harder, or it will make it harder if the predator is moving slow, slowly. So I'm going to have it move just, um, well, we'll start with five steps. And also, well, actually, you know what? Let's just try that for now. So let's see what that looks like. So it's following my cursor, following my cursor, and when it gets to the edge, it does this crazy glitching thing. So if we want it not to do that, we need to go down here in our motion blocks and use this one that says, if on edge, bounce. Okay, so let's see. That should have fixed that. Yep, so now when it goes to the edge, it doesn't do the shaking thing. However, it does do that shaking, glitching thing if we hold still and our predator's right on the cursor like that. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I would prefer that that doesn't happen. So in order to prevent that, what we need to do is go back into our control blocks and we're going to use one of these if-then blocks. So I'm dragging an if-then block right here and it's going to say if and then under sensing we'll put touching mouse pointer. So if touching mouse pointer then, and this might sound kind of redundant, but I'm going to do then go to mouse pointer. You'll see that this basically just causes it to no longer glitch out. Instead, it's just going to follow the mouse pointer. It's still a little shaky, but much better than it was. Okay. Also, I want it to move even slower, so I'm going to make it move just three steps. So now it's even slower. Okay. All right. Um, if you're having trouble with uh, the way it's orientating, meaning it's um, spinning in a way you don't want it to spin or facing a way you don't want it to face, you can use, um, where are they? You can use this block right here where it says set rotation style, left, right. So let me just show you, if I do set the rotation style to left, right, now it no longer goes upside down. Notice that it no longer goes upside down. If I set the rotation style to all around, then it will be able to spin upside down like that. Okay. All right, so you may want to use that. All right, so next we'll set up the motion for our prey or gobo. And then we'll be uh, moving on to do some troubleshooting and uh, adding some extras.